place between the birth and the as all things do, but exist differently. These memories, the memory papers, still remain untold. Now molded, now broken, what forms they became. Angels, demons, different yet same. To them, a purpose given and life to uphold. In addition, a truth that must remain untold. But look at high, this fate I defy. No bonds, no rules, no truths to rely. And believe what you will in this truth you behold. I will tell it to you. I won't keep it untold. Hold. Imagine for me a place, if you will, where all is somber and all is still. The dark and the light have ceased to be. This past will become our future eternally. Hey everyone. <laughs> I guess we made it. As you can see, the dawn is fast approaching. The endless night comes to an end, I suppose. <laughs> At least, well, I guess it's not endless then, is it? <sighs> It's been a month for me. It's been a lot of thinking. But maybe I'll talk about that later. For now, let's just enjoy this. Yeah? Happy Hallow's Eve. Happy Hallow's Eve, Sockman. Happy Halloween. Happy yeah. Halloween, Jade the Wise. <laughs> I do love enjoying things. You do. 15 months. Look who's committed. <laughs> Mina's month be like. Yeah. Yeah, my month be like. But... Oh, you know how long I've been planning this stream, though? So long. <laughs> I, um, I made, like, the template for, um, like, the, the, the tier list thing. Um, like, months and months ago. <laughs> so, um, so this one feels pretty gratifying to finally do, I think. I I'm excited about this one. I hope you all are excited about this one. You better be, if you're not... I'm, I'm gonna find you. I'm gonna get you. <laughs> We're gonna fight. <laughs> you are? You are. You better be. I guess I won't talk too long. We have... Oh gosh. Is it... I think it's... It's either 60 or 61 games to go through. And I like... Calcul I was like calculating in my head. I'm like, oh, that's easy to calculate, right? Like, 61? Okay. Uh, I was like calculating in my head. I was like, huh... Like, you know, if I spend two minutes on each, you know, that's, um, that'll be, like, <laughs> you know, that'll be a, a, a nice two-hour stream, right? And then I was thinking about it, <laughs> and I was like, I am not spending two minutes on each. Oh, uh, surely you'll... Okay, well, some of them I'll spend less than two minutes. Like, um, like the Dread X collection games. Like, all of them are, are in here. Um, yeah, loads of things to play. Yeah, I, well, should I try? I'm, no, I'm not going to avoid spoilers. <laughs> it won't be a fight, fellow. It's going to be a beatdown. I will cry and there will be snot. It'll be really embarrassing for everyone involved. <laughs> I... <laughs> I mean, yes, but you know, have a have, buck up a little bit, right? Have a have a little uh 
<laughs> a, li a little confidence, right? No, no. It's realistic. It's realistic is what it is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what is confidence? What is love? <laughs> I don't know. Confidence is basically just like, think about what you want and then say that you are. If you want to be a... Uh, you know, if you... Aw, oh, Jade the Wise, thank you so much for the gift to Sockman. Also, Hype Train. Hype Train. Okay. <laughs> hype Train. Okay. Alright. Okay. Well, <laughs> Hype Train. I could take me in and a fight. Mm, those are some... Those are Those are literally some fighting words right there. And like straight up, that's not even I'm not even over exaggerating. Oh my god. <laughs> Zodiac, thank you for the gift to Jade the Wise! You gave a gift you without 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 subbing yourself? Holy cow. Also, thanks so much for the hype train. <laughs> hype train? Yeah, hype train. Level one hype train. That's a pretty weak hype train. That's some that's some weak sauce right there. I don't know what to tell you. That's um, you know. <laughs> yeah, hype train. <laughs> Only level one. I see now. I've I've entered my um. I've I've entered scary arc, which means I can just bully you into <laughs> no. <laughs> Classic. We need it for the history, right? I will abstain from long for now. I have been waiting for months for you to do that to to switch me to classic, but abstain from long. I can't believe you actually did it. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, <laughs> the fuck. <laughs> Gotta get that hype train rolling off, Ray. You don't. You didn't have to get that hype train rolling, but like you know, thank you. <laughs> and immediately. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe you could save points, tourist. Are you. You aren't thinking economically enough. Come on, the 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 long hair classic outfit is like is like well known across the lands, you know? If you just did one or the other, you know. Choo Choo Charles will be on the list later. Choo Choo Charles will be on the list. Um Oh man, uh, I no mm, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold my tongue on that specific beat because I um an update came out for Choo Choo Charles and I played it. <laughs> But I'm gonna hold my tongue because the whole point of tier list is for me to just fucking ramble at you. I mean, a less than two minutes. Hey, I'm listen. Yeah, listen. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Of course. Duh. <laughs> of course, less than two minutes. I mean, obviously. No, I won't. I will not. I definitely will not. I already know that. Like the first couple like ones that we're gonna list i have so much to say about maybe i should roll into it no 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 we're fine we're fine we're fine uh no one's gonna be here by the end of this by the end of this is just gonna be me like rambling to myself about horror games that i like and hate and like honestly that's how i want to spend my evening spam <laughs> today it was awful <laughs> Uh, today was just, was, was actually terrible. I'm trying to pick it back up, though. I'm trying to, I, I want, I want my last day, you know, of, of darkness to be, I don't want to look back on it like that. I want, I want to be a happy day, you know. You know, 48 hour stream? Listen, we gotta up the ante. The Hollow Knight stream was 24 hours. We gotta up it. Come on. <laughs> you know? I don't think I, if I did a 48 hour stream, it, it, it would have to involve sleep. Sleep would have to happen somewhere. I take back my head. <laughs> what the hell, Taurus? No, no, you don't take back your head, Pat. <laughs> um, actually. I mean, we will call fellow mama if you do that. Oh, well. I, I could do a 48 hour stream. I just, I would need to sleep, you know? I returned my head pat. Aww. Taurus, that's so sweet of you to do of your own volition. <laughs> Isn't Taurus such a good me, Ned? 
<laughs> 72 hour break, no break stream, let's go. What, what, why is it getting up? Why is it increasing? How long do humans go for without sleeping before they die? I mean, I'm not human, so you know, I'd be fine. But like, <laughs> just keeps going. It just, a 96 hour stream, that would be four days about five days i think wait not four yeah four days two hour stream let's go tourist doesn't want to mod that long listen i have to look out for tourists like if i if i pull some like tears of the kingdom level shit where i like stream for nine hours at a time um like I'm tormenting my my poor like faithful loyal me net. <laughs> um, thirty second stream. Let's go. We're we're way past that. We're way past that. Okay. Um, I mean, you do nothing but to torment Taurus. Well, where'd the badonkas come from? What are you talking about? Always had these. Well, okay, that's not true. <sighs> Listen, you know when you converse with this demon that's infested your body for years on end, and then the two of you decide to mutually end both of your existences to form one continued existence? You know when you do that? Like... You know, you would want to use these shape-shifting powers to make small edits to... You would want to do that. You would do that. That is something that you would do. <clears throat> so, anyway. Hype Train success? Hype Train success. Thank you all for the subs and the biddies. I really appreciate it. <laughs> oh my god. 360... 65 hour stream one hour per day that's kind of crazy dang that's kind of crazy to think about huh how much my how much of my life have i spent on stream at this point actually maybe i shouldn't be considering that. uh uh small edits you mean editing it to no longer mm. oh zodiac <laughs> what a good minette you are. <laughs> Nothing small about... <laughs> Swear to God, chat. Swear to God. Oh, I am the best minette? Oh, them's fighting words. Them's fighting words. You're about to overtake Aiden in terms of subs, which is insane. <laughs> Apart from tourists, he'll be dead soon. No, no, we'll keep tourists around. Okay, okay. I gotta get rolling. Or do I? Do I have to get rolling? Why don't you all dictate if I have to get rolling? No, I'm kidding. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I hope everything go... Zodiac. Zodiac. Bad. <laughs> Thank you for the five gifts. I really appreciate it. God dang. Oh, god dang. Oh, I hate when it does this, though. When it does the alert like 500 times. If I got gifts more often, it would be a problem. I don't know what's up with all the... Hi. I don't know what... Oh, what's up with all the, the, the gifties, guys? I mean, like, thank you, obviously. Zodiac, stop spending dosh. Can you tell him, Frey? You tell him. You tell him what- Hi. You tell him what's up. <laughs> I'm about to be a prop <laughs> to yourself. Ah. <sighs> oh. Okay. Hi. Okay. So... <laughs> I'm ruining myself. 
Are we? Are, are we? I think we're ready to get into this. I... I hope you all are, are, are settled in. You got some popcorn. I would recommend lurking this stream. <laughs> Not not in terms of like like don't watch, but like I feel like this stream will be very much better enjoyed as second monitor content because I'm I'm just about to ramble about some things. Uh also. Oh, I didn't prepare something. Oh look at me No, no, it's don't please do not compete i swear to god oh no do do not compete i will i we will have we will have issues um let me oh hold on Okay, I have one last thing to check. Sorry, I actually forgot to do something. Um, okay. Okay, we just got a womp. And that should be good. Okay. Okay, I think I'm, I think I'm good. I think I've fixed everything that I need to fix. And let's cruise, please be fine. Oh. Damn it. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. No, damn it. What happened? What happened to my things? This is a tragedy. Did I not save my thing? That's fine. We'll just fix it manually. Doop, doop, doop. I already sized it correctly, so whatever. <laughs> Mario's peak core? Well... So, with, like, these kind of tierless streams, um, I need, like, uh, I need, like, more than just my own BGMs, because we're gonna be here, <laughs> you know? Um, but hopefully I did the track setting right so that it's not on the VOD so that, uh, the entire stream doesn't get copyright claimed by Nintendo. Uh, because, because that would be a shame. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. Uh, first, of course, as always, my favorite part is explaining the tears. Um, uh, at the very, at the very top, there's peak horror. Uh, this is like some of the best horror fiction I've ever experienced. Um, obviously I am a, I am a game, a horror game connoisseur more so than, than like anything else. I do like other horror media, but I am biased. I must admit, uh, our, our, our second tier is, uh, actually pretty damn scary, which I, I don't get scared much by horror games, so if if a game genuinely freaked me out, it goes at least here, okay? Uh, good game, decent horror. I think this is just kind of the catch-all for good games, you know? Typically, there is horror games that's like, that was a good game. The horror was fine, but it was just a good, a good, ex a good spooky experience, you know? Not scary, but still okay. I have qualms with this category because... A horror game should, at least in some capacity, be a little bit scary, you know? It should at least try to scare you in some kind of way. If it's not scaring you, uh, uh, it's, it's like, something needs fixed. But if it's still an okay game, you know, this is where it goes. No good horror here. <laughs> uh, this is for bad games. <laughs> There's no good horror. There's not even really a good game. It just kind of exists. Everything is bad, but it's funny. I don't think I have to explain this to you. Uh, this is for 
uh, this is for um, games that are that are funny bad. And the whole game has to be bad. Like, some aspects of the game can still be good, and it can still go, like, here. If everything is bad, it either goes in, everything is bad, but it's funny, or... <laughs> you know. Why? Oh, Mario. Fuck. <laughs> oh, no. Why is my stream already scuffing? What did I do wrong? Huh. Also, is the music, is the music, uh, is the music loud enough? Today is scuff day. Uh, it always is when I do something experimental like this. Uh, is, is the, is the music, uh, loud enough, by the way? Music is nice and soft. It's a bit quiet, but I think that's preferable. Yeah, it is. Okay, cool. I was just wondering if it, like, couldn't even be heard because then I, I would bump it up just a little bit. Okay. Um... Let's get into this. Let me... Let me test one thing real quick. I wonder... Hmm. That's no, fine then. Okay. First game. Oh yeah, oh I forgot to mention. These games are going in order of what order I played them on stream. So we're gonna start with games that most of you probably don't remember me playing. Actually, we're definitely starting with stuff that you don't remember me playing. And then we'll slowly work our way up to games that you have seen me play. Okay. Okay. All the ground rules are set. First, the first horror game that I ever played on stream was Poppy Playtime Chapter 1. And I think because of that, I have a bit of, like, an affinity for it. I'll... I'll stick this in the middle while I'm talking about it. Um, I think because it's the first horror game I ever played on stream, and it's like the first, it's the first stream I can remember that like had some really fun clips and stuff. I don't know. I have a very fond memory of this game. I'm not gonna lie. It taints it taints it a little bit. But even without that, Poppy Playtime is a good game. Brontosaurus, yes. <laughs> that wasn't chapter one, but. Poppy Playtime is a good game. People, I, I I feel like I've talked about Poppy Playtime a lot, and I definitely get people's hangups with it, right? Like, it definitely sucks that, uh, I don't remember Poppy. Uh, it definitely sucks that, like, the company is, is a little shitty in some ways, like the NFT stuff, the lore NFTs, which is the dumbest thing in the world. Um, but, like, you cannot deny the, like, the production level of the game is really good. It's got fun and interesting mechanics with the stretchy arm puzzles, with the, like, the wires puzzles, the electricity puzzles. Typically, a, a puzzle are just kind of a stand-in for, like, horror game things that typically, like, aren't very fun. Poppy Playtime, I actually enjoy some of the puzzles. It non-ironically kind of reminds me a little bit of Portal 2. Obviously not that good, but like some of the puzzles in here are really good. And I have these next to each other because I wanted to talk about them together. So I'm just going to talk about chapter one and two together. Um, Chapter one is really short. It's just like a little jaunt through the place and it's kind of okay. But then you get to that ending chase scene in the vents and that chase scene is really good. I really like that chase scene. I love this the the sound design. You can hear him fucking pitter patter all over the vents. It's and it's it's really freaky. It's a little trial and errorish, so you lose a little bit of the scare factor there. But it only took me about two or three tries. Um, generally, Poppy Playtime is just a good game. Uh, some decent horror, good game. Uh, chapter two, the birth of Brontosaurus. Yes. I like chapter two more. I think. Chapter two is longer. It's got a little bit more filler. Some of the mini games, you, there's like three core mini games. There's like the one that's like the Simon Says one. There's the, um, oh my gosh, what is it? Mm, I'm trying to remember. Um, I have them in my head, but I don't know what to call them. There's the, the, the running in the dark 
oh my god, what is it called? Freeze tag? It's not freeze tag. <laughs> and there's the uh the whack-a-mole one. The whack-a-mole one and the the um the red light, green light, that's what it is. The red light, green light ones, those ones are scary. Um and the the Simon Says one is kind of humorous, the way that it just keeps amping up. Like I had a lot of fun with chapter two. This one is also going in good game, decent horror, but I liked it more as an experience, you know? Like, as just, like, an experience, it continued to surprise me. There were fun mechanics, like the um, the the swinging ropes that you do at the beginning. I was like, oh, that's totally getting incorporated into the chasing later. And it did, and it was super fun. I loved the hide-and-seek section with Mommy, Long Legs. The game is not that scary, but it gets re- it's very close to this category for me. Like, it's just freaky enough. Like... I, I don't know. I, I, I'm almost there because there are some sections that are genuinely tense and scary um, and that I really like. Um, it's just, a, I think it's just a little too, I don't know, just a little too twee, a little too, I'm not sure how to put it. It's just like, I think... I, I think like any game that just resorts to your loss being just like jump scare, rah, cryptic text, you know, um, I, I think that really pulls me out of it. But the general atmosphere and just like, yeah, it, it's good. It's it's a good game. Um, It has its moments. And it has its moments in both ways. <laughs> um. So I, I am, this one obviously came much later, but I wanted to talk about them both at the same time. Uh, I'll do the same thing for Ban Ban and um, Dread X Collection. <laughs> uh, okay. Next. <laughs> Protein for Muscle. I think I have a fun story about this game. Um, so Protein for Muscle is a game that I streamed in... Uh, I have no idea what this is. So, like, I was trying to do longer streams when I first started. This is still the very first Halloween in November that we're on right now. These two games. Um, and, um, I, um, uh, I, what, who was it? Oh, my God. Gal Gura. Gal Gura played this game, and I watched her play this game live, and I thought it was very entertaining. And so, like, a year or two or whatever it was later, uh, I stole it and played it for myself. <laughs> um, this is uh, the, um, the I'm like a worm, do you see the resemblance meme comes from this one. <laughs> uh, I didn't know that you had a flashlight until my last, like, 15 minutes with the game, so I was just running around in pitch black darkness. <laughs> no wonder nobody watched my, my fucking streams. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. Um, but um, Protein for Muscle is kind of a joke game. Uh, the whole purpose is that you're running around collecting protein from big muscle boys, and the big muscle boys like run you down when they see you. It's kind of scary, not sort of. I, it's, I, I feel like it's meant to be a comedic game. So, like, I think not scary but still okay is the place for it. Because it's definitely not very, not scary at all, you know? But it does, like, attempt to be, to have a little bit of horror. This category is for there's, like, no horror at all. There's some, there's some, there's some stuff here, <laughs> you know? Uh, I do see the resemblance. Um, and the last game of Halloween in November, uh, was Slender, the eight pages. God, where do I even rank this game? I mean, do I even have to tell you about Slender, the eight pages? Like, it is an intensely, like, one of, if not the most influential indie horrors of all time. How is the game itself? 
the game itself is fine. It it's it sucks. <sighs> yes. So I'm gonna need that eight page essay on my desk tomorrow, Mina. <sighs> so slender the eight pages. <sighs> First of all, it's way too hard to win. <laughs> you have to be constantly sprinting with your flashlight off in the dark. Your flashlight battery is such a like integral thing. Uh, the game is just ridiculously hard, which kind of makes it less scary to me. Um, it's not a good game, but it is a fun game. It's a content game. And I remember in true Mina fashion, I like came back to it another day on stream to try to beat it and just like it is so hard to beat you are not meant to win i'm a little surprised there's no scary but terrible to play category <laughs> that would be kind of good maybe if one of these categories doesn't get used much i'll i'll, I'll reorient reorient it like maybe this one i'm not sure uh <laughs> scary but terrible to play kind of good um slender though oh gosh i feel like i gotta put it good game decent horror it's not a good game though but it's not not scary <laughs> i think it's pretty scary you know what you know what i'm gonna do it Scary, sc ugh. scary game, but not good. <laughs> I think Slender fits really good into that. <laughs> I feel bad because it's such an influential game. It and it sparked such a like such a thing behind it. You know, I don't think we would have a lot of modern indie horror without slender and so it sucks to put it down here but like it kind of belongs here it's not very good <laughs> and i might talk myself out of this later but i probably won't because i gotta move on <laughs> um but what you want to talk about influential horror you know what's coming it's five nights at freddy's baby um fnaf I really like FNAF, and the first game, I feel pretty conclusively, is probably the best one, I think. I, I could go back and forth on that statement, but the first game is really good. Is it peak horror? I mean, do I, have to, do I even have to talk about how influential FNAF has been, you know? But, like, if Slender's going down here despite how influential it's been, we're judging this game on the game alone. And the game alone is great. Like, the game alone is really good. Um, like, it's genuinely scary. It has some of the only jump scares that genuinely kind of get to me. Um, the, like, slight lore tips were really fun. Um, I'm a riot if you put it at peak horror. It's, but like, here's the thing. I, I want to put it at peak horror because so few games have been able to replicate, um, the, uh, oh my gosh. Luigi singing in the background. Uh, so few games have been able to replicate the uncanny vibe. I feel. I feel like so few horror games actually make something realistic and uncanny. Something can be uncanny while being monstrous, but like FNAF is very real, so to put it. The art style alone is... It's... it's I've never seen it replicated. I've never seen it replicated as good as it is in the first game. 
and it doesn't even get better in the in the in the games that come after. I'm putting this in peak horror, <laughs> and you can fight me on this, but like FNAF does something that not only is great, but that nobody has done before, and I think that that is reason enough to put it in peak horror. Oh my god, help me. <laughs> okay, I'm fine. <laughs> Okay, Mina. It's going in peak horror. You can't. You can't. Um, you can't convince me otherwise. FNAF two. <laughs> gotta keep going. I gotta keep pace. Uh, FNAF two. I really like FNAF two as a game. I think it's a very fun video game. The sense of flow that you get when playing it is genuinely very fun. It has a really good visceral feel to it. When you flick down to get your camera up or your, you put your mask on, it feels good. It just feels good. Um, that being said, it is not a very good horror game. Um, like, yes, some of the stuff in the game is scary. I like the death mini games. I like the, the look of the, I think the old animatronics, like broken up ones, are very scary. I like um I like Bonnie and Chica. They look really freaky. Um But like I can't put this <sighs> Does it have decent horror? I <sighs> I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. You know what would have really made FNAF 2, like, maybe even go up to actually pretty damn scary is, like, if there's, this is the only FNAF game I feel where the lack of motion really hurts it. Like, there's stuff right in front of you, but everything is constantly frozen, you know? In FNAF 3, stuff moves. In FNAF 4, stuff moves. In FNAF 2, nothing moves. And... I don't know. It's a good game. I, I, I want to put it in good game, and it has some decent horror. We're putting it in that category. You have less than a minute to think about it. I'm, I'm getting through them, okay? I'm working my way. Also, I've, I've, got, I've got an error to fix. Oh, no. No, don't worry about it. I'm fine. There we go. Or oh, wait. Yeah. Oh. Help me. Help me. OBS is doing OBS things on me. I can't even describe to you what OBS is doing right now. I think I've done something severely wrong and OBS is just very, very mad about it. <laughs> I don't know what I did though, so I don't know why it's so mad at me. How? how what the fuck? Alright, that's, that's whatever. I can't believe she found literally the best playlist. Listen, I want Nintendo music. Sue me. Sorry, I keep wiggling this around to try to get the, the, the to try to get it. It was perfect. I, I, I promise you it was perfect before you came in and messed everything up. Alright, I'm gonna lay off. I mean, we get disappointed if you don't wiggle. All right, I see how it is. FNAF 3! Why is my playlist why is it cut off so much? Help me. All right, there we go. FNAF 3! <laughs> Speaking of which, all right. I'm going to wiggle while I talk about FNAF 3. Um, so I really like FNAF 3. I feel like most people don't like FNAF 3. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's the black sheep of the, of the fan base or whatever. I don't follow the fan. I don't know. FNAF 3 has a really unique concept. Just like as a horror game, not even as a FNAF game, as a horror game, right? FNAF 3 is very cool. Um, you are trapped in like in a haunted house that you're kind of running 
with a serial killer. I, the, and uh, is it scary? The question comes down to me, is it scary? And I'm kind of, kind of trying to take myself back, you know? I'm kind of trying to take myself back to um, to when it came out. And it was very scary. Like, I <laughs> assume you can. Um, I feel like it was scary. I don't know though. I, I'm I'm between these two tiers for it. I think I'm gonna land it here. I know everyone's avoiding the actually pretty damn scary tier. I I think just like FNAF 2, it just barely misses the mark for me. And I it has to do with spring traps, jump scares. The jump scares in general are constant. They get so old. But the atmosphere is great. The concept is awesome. The gameplay is genuinely freaky. You're whipping the cameras around. You can't see him. He's so hard to see on the cameras. This is the only FNAF game that actually genuinely like succeeds with the original conceit of the game. Because the original conceit of the game was like, watch security cameras and like track the animatronics so that you don't die. FNAF 3 is the only game where you actually do that. <laughs> In order to not die. And you use a lot of sound cues. And you... It's got really good gameplay. It's got good gameplay. It's pretty scary. It just misses the mark on places. Uh, FNAF 4 is not like that. FNAF 4 is fucking scary. <laughs> FNAF 4 is scary. I don't... I don't even care. I, I... Maybe this is dependent person to person. I don't know. FNAF 4... The, the, like, gameplay mechanic of making you lean up next to the door and in person, a as, as a person, like, quiet your breathing in order to listen and see if you can hear. That is the coolest shit. <laughs> that is so cool. It's such a cool mechanic that sets you up perfectly for if you fail. It sets you up perfectly for the jump scare. It's so good. It's so good. The way that it, like, like kind of mirrors the original while totally breaking away from it in terms of thematic and gameplay. Oh, it's it's so good. The nightmare animatronics are not very scary. They're, they're, they're way over-designed, yes. But I don't really feel like they need to be because the gameplay is scary. And that's kind of the thing that I've always loved about FNAF is, like, the gameplay kind of carries. Like, it's... It's really good. It's it's a very good game. It genuinely scares me to play. Oh my gosh. With like Fredbear and Nightmare towards the end, when you're like having to listen to like the pitter patter of the footsteps and you have to like, you have to follow him. And the fact that you have to like, after like spending the whole game, like confronting or, or hiding from like, all the things trying to kill you, you have to directly confront Fredbear. It's so good. It's so good. I always like the ambience and some of the storytelling of FNAF, but I always felt bored with the gameplay. And that's fair. I think most of the games feel really good to play. I think the games that don't are like three and kind of like sister location. The rest of them, I like the gameplay. Um. Uh, and, uh, yeah. I think that's all I've got to say about 4. It, like, no notes. It's a good game. Sister Location. Oof. Where do I even put this? I really like Sister Location. Has a more story focus. And at the time, that was super cool. Um, I, like... <sighs> so... I don't think it's scary. The jump scares in this game are the worst that they are in the entire franchise. The jump scares are not scary. The gameplay is not scary. It's not scary, but it's still good, you know? It's still a good game. It's just not very scary. Like, if I could, 
like put it in a more specific category. I would put it in not scary, but a great game. Uh, but that's why this is kind of written like this to be a catch all. <laughs> so, um, I like sister location. Um, I, I feel like I don't even have that much to say about it though. Honestly, all the additions that they put in that Scott put in later in the game, like the custom night and stuff, I, I don't really care much for. I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm a little, I'm a little torn up putting sister location below all of these, but that's just where it's going. All right. That's just where it fits. I can't, I can't question myself. I just gotta move on. Uh, Freddy Frazbear's Pizza Simulator. Oh. All right, listen. All right, listen. Ugh. It's not going in P-Core. But I want it to. <laughs> I, 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 I want it to, okay? All right, I, I want to put it in P-Core. Because, on God, like, those sections, specifically the very first one, I don't know why it does write, oh my gosh, the, oh, I'm, oh, okay. So, like, I don't know why the later salvage scenes are, like, not as good as the very, very first one that the game opens with. But, oh my god. When the game opened with that initial salvage scene, I was floored. <laughs> and I think everyone agrees that those sections of the game are just so goddamn terrifying. <laughs> they're so terrifying, but they're also so inspired. It's such a weird and unique and creative vibe to be sitting across from these terrifying robots just like listening to this really disturbing audio and like watching for small subtle movements and it's it's so good the salvage parts are so good the like the mini games and the um the actual pizza building stuff that's fun i i think that that part of the game is fun it's fun gameplay wise you know it, it's it's fun to like i i think management games like that are kind of like light management light like like pizza sim is are really fun and in addition the um the the uh the night sections of pizza sim are also terrifying the jump scares aren't good still um the designs are cool but not scary um but the gameplay oh my gosh like the way that you can't see them you just vaguely know where they are and you can listen to them that's so good if it weren't for like the kind of shitty jump scares and the um the voice lines i don't like the voices it's cool that they have voice acting but i feel like it didn't need to be in pizza sim whenever like one of them gets close to you and you hear them say like a line that kind of takes me out of the scare a little bit um it, it kind of like preps me for the jump scare almost it makes it less scary but still like that is not too like that is not to disparage that everything that Pizza Sim does right, because it does so much right. It's a free game. I would recommend this game to anyone. And I think even, and I could be wrong about this, seeing like the true ending of Pizza Sim might make you kind of interested in FNAF lore because it's like the first fucking time ever. <laughs> like outside of Sister Location, Sister Location and Pizza Sim are like the first times that things actually happen in the FNAF stories that you get to see and play. Like, that's such a big deal. You know? That, that's such a, that's such a big deal to me. The, the way that it, like, there's just a genuine story wrap-up cutscene at the end of Pizza Sim. It is great. The game is funny. The game is fun. The game is scary. It's a great game. It's a really great game. I want to put it in P-Core, but it has too many issues that I already talked about. I gotta move on.
This is peak. <laughs> Security breach. Security breach is peak. <laughs> what happened here? Wait, did you play that on stream? Yes, I did. I collabed this with Vile. Um a while ago. I never I, I I never finished on stream and I have never finished in my own time the game. I've never finished it. I want to say we did Did we do two streams of it? We either did two streams or one really long stream. I I got like more than halfway through the game. <sighs> You know, if I put it in peak horror, nobody will question me. They'll just be like, aha, uh -huh, Mina's being so funny. And then I can just move on. <sighs> okay, but in all seriousness, it is funny. <laughs> it's funny. Come on. <laughs> Come on, it's funny. You cannot tell me that when, that when, <laughs> when, when Glam Rock Friday goes, Gregory. <laughs> You do not fucking lose it because I, it's so stupid. It's, it wasn't entertaining enough to finish it, but for the time that I streamed it, it was entertaining. <laughs> the whole section with the sun and moon guy, uh, bugged for us. And so like, he was just kind of, just kind of doing his walking animation on like a pile of paint cans. <laughs> Just the whole time while I ran around for five hours looking for a generator that I couldn't find. Um, <laughs> the, the game is like 75 gigabytes. Why? The game runs like shit even on the like hot. Why, why did this have to be this? Like, this is very, very obviously a studio's first ever project. Because the scope is... Nobody was checking for scope. You cannot convince me that anyone on that team was managing scope. Because they've got mech gameplay where you hop into Glamrock Freddy. They've got... I... It's so bad. <laughs> the whole game is just awful. I don't even know how to say, like, how bad it is. Some sections of this game are so bad that they're not even funny. Like, that section where you have to make a fucking pizza or else you get jump scared? What the hell? <laughs> what the hell? Like, out of context, that probably sounds insane. It's real. It exists. It it is a thing. I'm moving on. I'm moving on. Fuck security breach. I I hope I never finish it. If I do finish it, it's going to be on stream because I don't care to finish it in my free time. I literally don't care. I think the pizza is fine, but the puzzle maze. I don't even know what the hell you're talking about. I'm not going to lie. Maybe I didn't get there. I hope I didn't get there. Worst kind of fever dream. FNAF is Shrek. Like, Shrek was this really good movie, right? And, like, and then, like, they made, like, Shrek 2 and, like, Shrek Forever After. And, like, people don't know that the Shrek movies are, like, really good, you know? They're, they're good movies. The only thing that people know is, like, Shrek, A Christmas Tale. Because it's just like a meme. And so this thing that was genuinely cool and good got made into this, like, into this meme. And now everyone can just say, like, oh, yeah, that's shit. FNAF is garbage. It was further in. I was watching Tyler play it. They didn't finish it either. <laughs> they told me they were going to. <laughs> they lied. Um, when is FNAF... <laughs> the good Puss in Boots movie? FNAF is the good Puss in Boots movie. Uh, I don't know. It's it's not as good as... as <laughs> this, this comparison is stupid. But, like, also... Uh, the FNAF one, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> don't question me. Just just accept my answers, okay? Pony Island. Um, So, if I remember correctly... Um... 
I played Pony Island when it came out in 2016, and then I streamed it. Um, so Pony Island is not scary. <laughs> um, I maybe wouldn't even classify it as a horror game. You might be like a like it's more spooky vibe than it is than it is scary. Um. I'm trying to think if the game has any moments that are genuinely freaky. Like, there's a couple. Like, the part where you're, like, typing and, like, your words that you're typing, you're trying to type, like, keep transforming into whatever Lucifer wants you to say. There are spooky moments. But in terms of horror game, it's got to be lower down here. And it's not an incredible game or anything. The soundtrack kind of slaps. It's It's got some, like, killer tunes uh, here and there. Um, and, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's good. It's a really, it's very inspired, you know, it's very, like, I love the way that, like, when you unlock all the secrets, the, like, the, like, expectation of who you were and, like, when you were alive kind of get flipped on their head. The whole vibe of just, like, when you die, your soul goes to an arcade where you play a game with a pony made by Lucifer. It's just such a... What, what a concept. You know? Um, some of the puzzles kind of suck towards the end. The butterfly puzzles, specifically. I... I... I, I hate... <laughs> I hate those puzzles. You typically just spam random things until something works. I think they're at least going for horror. Yeah. 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 But I guess we'll talk more about... Um, oh my god, what is his name? Daniel... Daniel. <laughs> I forget his last name. Mullins? Is that someone else? That's someone else. Mullins, I was right. Nice. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll talk more about Daniel Mullins later, obviously. Um... But, like, Pony Island's great. It's a great game. I still can't believe you skipped the hex. Like everyone else, shaking my head. Uh, I own it now, so I plan to play it sometime soon. Uh, Knock, knock. I collabed this one with Frosty. And <laughs> it, was, it was a very fun collab. I just got to, like, drag... Uh, I just got to drag Frosty into <laughs> because she I don't think she plays horror games you know um she's like a like she's like a like an an fps or like like kind of kind of gamer so like um <laughs> I think it was funny her just being like <laughs> like loving being there with me because we're friends and and she and she loves me but also being like <laughs> but also wishing that she wasn't there I think that experience really, really, like, really, like, made the, 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 the game a lot more fun for me. Um, Knock Knock is really great. Um, the gameplay is super cryptic, though. Um, like, discovering what you need to actually do to succeed is, it can be a little arduous. It's got good horror. There are some scary things in this game. Um... There's a very, it's got the FNAF thing where it has a big, like, lack of control that feels really good for a horror game. Um, and so, like, it's definitely a good game with decent horror. Is it actually pretty damn scary? Uh, I, I don't know if I would go that far. Like, No, I don't think I would go that far. It is a good game that I'd recommend. It's a very not very well known game. Um, if you can pick it up for cheap, definitely definitely a recommendation. Um I remember what this game was now. That is not the the cover I remember. The the cover for these are just kind of I made these, so they're whatever I want them to be. Fuck you. <laughs> no. Sorry. Um but okay, but yeah, um but yeah, knock knock. 
Uh, it also has an achievement that's a Twin Peaks reference, so, you know, you got me there. And, uh, do I have anything else? I feel like I have more to say about Knock Knock. Oh, 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 one more thing about Knock Knock. The story. And, like, the, I guess it's less of a story, more of, like, it's one of those stories that's, like, mostly vibes, you know what I mean? And cryptic text and stuff. But the cryptic text is really good. It's, I really love a lot of the writing in Knock Knock. Um, sometimes it feels a little out of place to what you're doing, but generally it's very freaky, very cool. I really like it. Um, Lights Off. This was the first game in the revival of the Halloween special stream. Um, so I don't know how to feel. Actually, I know exactly where to put this. Um, because I was very scared <laughs> during Lights Off. Um, uh, but nothing happens. <laughs> Spoiler, I guess. Nothing happens in the game. Uh, you just kind of walk around a house for a while. And the atmosphere is, is and the sound design is, is pretty, pretty scary. Like, it, it got to me. Like, I was, uh, I was not doing great going through it. It kind of got me. But, um... It um, it doesn't really have much going on. It's clearly like a like a small project, probably from one person, one or two people. So like, you know, I I like this isn't to deter the fact that it's down here. I mean, slender the eight fucking pages is down here. This is not a category for like terrible games or something. Um, this is though. Um, uh. But, like, I, I think it's got a little bit of a PT vibe to it where you're repeating the same thing over and over and things get a little more demented as you keep going. Dang, I've never streamed PT. Oh, if I could put PT on here. I wish I could talk about PT. I should have. I should have. I should have put PT on here, actually, because I, there's, like, another game I put on here that I didn't stream, but I, I wanted to talk about. But I, I'll talk. I'll, we'll get that. I'm still looking forward to our first why. Well, well, I, well, uh, well, um, uh, next. I'm on observation duty. Um, this, I, I didn't know. I, so, like, obviously, like, I split chapter, Poppy Playtime chapter one and two up into different things and the FNAF games into different things. Um, but I'm on observation duty, even though, like, some of the games are better than the others. Um, I've kind of just played, like, a slapdash variety of them. Like, I think I've played, like, four and five on stream. I played, like, one in my free time. Um, uh, so I, I've, I've played, like, I've played a decent bit of it. This is a super cool game. It's it's a cool game. Is it scary? Good game, decent horror. You know, I'm going to change this to not scary, but still good. And I'm going to put it here, I think. Um, I don't think I'm on observation duty is... is uh, no. It does have some decent horror. What what do you guys think actually? This is a pretty this is a pretty well known game. I know what's going on top. Oh yeah. What what where would you all put I'm on observation duty? I really like the game. Like I, I really like it. I think it's fairly spooky. It ha I, I think it's fairly spooky just because um fun gameplay loop too. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Um like, it's kind of hard, so you get a little bit of that gamer focus that takes away some of the horror for me. Um, but, um, uh, but also, I, the reason that I think I'm actually going to put it up here in Decent Horror is because, um, it's about spookiness. It's kind of about spookiness, you know? 
we, we the, the categories. You got to read the categories. Um, I think I'm going to put it up here because when it does, like, jump scare you, not only is it pretty good and pretty freaky, but it, like, like, it happens so rarely that when it does happen, it's just some of them are kind of funny. Like the one where it's like, big man, <laughs> you know? Oh, and if I can't read? I don't know. Listen, most of the stream is just me fucking screaming at you, so this stream should be perfect for you. <laughs> Each man really did jump scare you? Yeah, well, the reason the jump scares work so well is because they're so infrequent. Mm. Also, can't lie, I have a very fond memory of this game, specifically 5, I think. Because I collabed that one with Freya Rabbit. And that was a super fun collab. Um, <clears throat> Man, I used to collab horror games around this time, huh? When did I stop doing that? <laughs> it's kind of weird that I don't do that anymore. I feel like Garden of Bam Bam would be kind of sick as a collab game. <laughs> anyway. Um, Ellen. Ellen's a cute little game. Inscription was a collab. That's true. Uh, Ellen was cute. Um, it's a short little game. It's not scary, but still good. <laughs> it's definitely where it belongs. Um, well, as bonked. Um, I mean, it's, uh... It's kind of like Lone Survivor if Lone Survivor had, like, a quarter of the budget, you know? Uh, so, I don't know. It's not very scary, but it's, like, a fun little romp. There's a couple moments that are kind of like, oh my gosh. Um, and, gosh, I really don't have that much to say about it. The, like, story and, like, place you explore is kind of whatever. Um, I sound like I don't like this game, but like as a, as a clearly what it is, like a small project by someone, um, it's fun. It's fun. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm not a fan of the art style. Yeah. <laughs> um, is the peak horror FNAF the original one? Yes. Yeah. That's the first game. It's the only game in peak horror right now. That'll change, I'm sure. Um, I will not re-explain myself. You can watch the VOD. You can watch the VOD without music so that Nintendo doesn't copyright me. Alright, we are now getting to another collab game. Dang. Um... So, the Dread X Collection 2. I'm going to start by going through each game. And then, um... Uh, and then I'm going to rank the collection as a whole. Um, so... Okay. Uh, if if you weren't around for, for, for this one, like... Well, it wasn't one stream. It was like two or three. If you weren't around for that... It's going to be a minute. I'm sorry. Um, but I'll talk, I'll talk about these because I, these are very unknown games, which is the whole point of the collection. Um, Another Late Night is... Uh, like... Oh, see, now I've lost my, like, okay category. You know what I mean? Uh, Because Another Late Night is like a... It's like kind of an RNG-ish game where you're just, like, perusing around a desktop... And some kind of horror stuff happens. It's like... It's not bad. Um, but honestly, it didn't really strike me. As anything, really. Uh, dang, I kind of... Want to relabel this to the... Because it's not a scary game. Let's relabel this to... Fine. <laughs> I keep changing my categories. I'm sorry. Listen, sometimes you got to, uh, sometimes you gotta, you gotta adjust. Okay. Uh, this, the fine is going to be the catch all for games that are fine. 
Is it that hard to add another tier? Do I need that many tiers? I feel like that's that's quite extravagant. <laughs> Having that many tiers, right? Mm. Seems like you could use them. Alright, alright, hold on. Let's add a row below. Actually, no. Add a row above. And then... Okay. Gotta adjust my colors a little. And then we can make, um... Then we make, can make Y the funny, the funny gray tier. <laughs> oh shit, right, and I gotta resize. I gotta resize everything. Look, you've ruined my framing by, by making me add another tier. Look what you've done. I'm ruined. Alright, uh, what is this category gonna be? Uh, this is fine. <laughs> uh, preposterous idea to add new tiers, squeeze everything. How did Y go above funny? What the fuck? <laughs> How did that happen? Wait, that's nutty. I didn't even notice that. I fixed it. Uh, fine game. Fine horror. Okay game. Okay horror. Nah, I like fine better. Uh, that's where, that's where another late night is going though. <laughs> right, that took too long. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta pick it up. We gotta go. Um, how do I even say this? Ar Arcade Electra? I remember this one. This one was kind of cool. Um, uh, like, it had a couple, I would, I think I would actually maybe even, uh, it feels weird to put this above something like, <laughs> to put this above some of these, but like, it was a good game with decent horror. It's, I mean, it's a small project. So you're in like an arcade and um, I don't, like, I don't even know how to describe it. You, when you go to play the games, instead of like playing on the arcade machine, it like fucks up the world in some kind of way. Like I remember one section where the room, like you go to play on it and the room just gets flooded and becomes like an obstacle course. And there's this like really creepy ambience going on, like while you do it. Uh it's I I honestly don't think I can describe this one in words, but I really enjoyed it. There's some kind of story stuff towards the end that's a little twee. There's a little bit of like a trapped in the machine story thing going on towards the end that's a little eh, whatever. But like as a small indie project, it's kind of fire. I don't know. I really liked it. Are you all are you all drinking for the stream? Good. Ready Passwords Pizza Sim was a real game? I thought it was a meme. Oh my god, Frosty, we we were just talking about you because you were here for knock knock. Frosty, do you remember when I dragged you into a horror game against your will? <laughs> <laughs> um next game next game okay charlotte's exile oh my god yes yeah, so i blocked it out until now charlotte's exile was a super fucking cool game it was not scary not scary still good um super cool like, if you like games that are, like, where you have to decode, like, if you have to, like, flip through, like, a book and decode a language, that's, like, this game in a nutshell. There's a bunch of different puzzles, and all of them are super cool. You're, like, flipping, I think the story is that you're flipping through the Necronomicon for some reason or another, 
and you have to like slowly translate it while also solving these like these like physical puzzles on the desk it's super cool super super cool game it's short it's small but it's super neat i would highly recommend it um i'm talking very highly about it but then again like like pony island and sister location are games that i really like you know even though they're under some of these um just a really really cool game not very scary i don't remember anything horror about it to be honest but it's a cool game uh uh solapsis uh Mm, we're somewhere around here. It is... Uh, I... Fine game, fine horror. Fine game, fine horror. Um, so it's like, it's like this super dark game where you're like an... A it's like a top-down view and you're like an astronaut on a planet. And you're just like kind of wandering around for a bit. Um, and... I don't remember much about it except for the ending. The ending is really freaky and I really like it. <laughs> um, it. It's just like this simple shot, but for a short game, having like a really cool, like just a game that's like spooky and leads up to like a really freaky ending. Like that's a vibe, you know, that's a vibe for like a 10, 15 minute game. However long this game is. Um, it's really cool. It's really fun. Um, well, it's not really fun actually, but it's, it's a fine game. <laughs> Getting to that point where I'm just like, words are just happening. Squirrel Stapler. I think Squirrel Stapler is pretty well known. <laughs> Squirrel Stapler is not very scary up until the very end. Uh, but I'm, I'm putting it higher because I love it. <laughs> I have not heard of this. Um. Dang, now I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> um, Squirrel Stapler is equal parts. It, it, it is that perfect balance of funny and horrific. Like, it made me laugh out loud just as much as it freaked me out. Do I need to play it? You don't need to play it. But it's a short game. It's a cool game. I, like, it's that perfect balance, I think. That perfect balance of funny and horror that... I, not a lot of games do. It's very unique. There's not a lot of games like it. And me reading that title. Um, to, to spark your interest, the general premise of the game is that you, you go, out, go out in the woods and you hunt down squirrels and you staple them to your dead wife to, in order to rebirth her. <laughs> so, you know. It's cool. Soccer for Love. Now I need to clarify. This is the the version that's in Dread X Collection 2, which was in there like years before the full game actually came out. I have not played the full game. I'm only ranking the part that I play in Dread X Collection, which is only the first. I, I'm pretty sure there's more than one uh, in, in the actual game. But for the first one, it's just like Lenora or whatever her name is. Um... But I remember being really, really impressed by this game. It is kind of scary. <sighs> Not scary. <laughs> Not scary. Still good. It's more funny than it is scary, which is totally fine. It's got a, it's got some moments that are kind of freaky. Um, and there's some really cool details, like when you like go through with a spell and you see some stuff that's changed, like it is very funny though. It is. It's a good game. Um, like when you like go through with a spell and you note and like there, there's things that I like that I only noticed like on a repeat play playthrough or something, which is like, like the, like some of the stuff that you have on your body gets like melded to it. And like, I didn't even notice that was happening. Um, like, it, it's very cool. A lot of detail. Yeah. Um, the diving bell is... Oh. Oh. 
that's that's tough I hold on let me like compare it okay it's going here <laughs> the diving bell is fucking scary <laughs> um I feel like the game itself is a little bit it doesn't have a lot of a lot going on gameplay wise but boy howdy does it make up for that uh by just being really goddamn scary <laughs> um but there are some cool gameplay sections the part where you're like uh you have to like go to a computer to type out logs and when you go to do that in order to do it you have to just like type and when you hit like the key it'll type out like what he's actually typing but um it, it it's a super cool way to have the player like go type a log in game by just having them like chicka, 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 on their keyboard like that's a super fun kind of control thing that like that just kind of caught me off guard and surprised me um the the theme the the like hook of the game is that you're in this like under you're at this at this research facility at the bottom of the ocean called the diving bell and everyone else has died <laughs> And it's your fault, and now they're haunting you. And it's and you're like running out of food, running out of oxygen. You're trying to escape, and the ending is super cryptic and creepy. It's a really cool game. It's really scary. Um, it's got some moments that really would really freak me out. Um, it's not like amazing. I was very close to tipping it down just into like good game, decent horror. But I think the fact that the horror is just really darn good bumps it up that little bit and the concept as well um i think bumps it up for me it's a good game the thing in the lake uh <laughs> this game's fine <laughs> um i liked it in, in especially like within the collection like, it's cool to just have this, like, kind of DOS-style game. And, like, what's cool about it is even though it's, like, this in this DOS-style, stuff, like, actually happens, you know, that you have to react to. There's this fucking monkey that'll just show up on any screen and tear you to pieces if it catches you. And it's kind of funny, but it's also kind of terrifying. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's fine. I, I liked it. I liked it plenty. It was good. I don't have that much more to say about it. There's not that much more that I remember about it, to be honest. Um, I don't even remember how it ended. But it had some fun story stuff. It was cool. The toy shop. Why? <laughs> this game fucking sucks. I'm sorry. I know this is a small project, and so like I'm ta I'm talking about like a like a one person effort or a small team. What the fuck is this? I <laughs> we have a why finally. Yeah, it, it takes a bit for me to be like why. It's not scary. It's just weird. The concept is that you're a toy in a toy store but everything looks realistic for some reason it's a creative mess it's one of the messiest games i've ever seen on a creative level um and it's just there's nothing scary in it either there's nothing there's no real gameplay to note it's it just exists and I don't know why. <laughs> to the end of days. I I literally don't remember anything about this game. Uh I remember that it's very red and that you shoot things with a gun. Uh whatever it probably sucks 
touched by an outer god. So this is like a Doom style game. I'm remembering it slowly. It's like Doom, but you're like, I think you mostly use your fists. And like the more stuff you kill, the more like, like, I, I think the more like fucked up you get. I could be totally wrong. I don't remember this one super well. Um, it was like, whatever. <laughs> I don't remember loving it. Uh, and I don't remember it being particularly scary. If all you remember is red, then yeah, it's a Y. <laughs> it's true. That's true. I don't know where to put this, actually. Funnily enough, it's either going in fine or Y. <laughs> you all be the judge based on what I said. Where 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 does this go? I feel like Y is unfair. Yeah. Time for another category. No. Um, it's fine. It's fine. You're right. You are you know what? You're right, Taurus. It's fine. <laughs> at least I remember stuff about this one. I don't remember this one at all. <laughs> Undiscovered. This game was fun. Funny and also fun. It's bad, but also good. And it's the final game in the Dreadx collection, thank God. We've been doing these forever. Um, I'm not sh Okay. I really... It's a very love-hate thing with it. Because it's got a weird vibe to it. Uh, where it's like this black and white film. Where someone is like recording you from behind, if I remember correctly. Um, and you're, you're like venturing into a tomb. Uh, and like... Going through the tomb is, well, once you, like, actually get in, you just fight skeletons. <laughs> it's not scary at all. Um, But then the ending is really creepy as the tomb kind of transforms into, like, the intestines of a creature. It's, it's, like, I, it's got to go in fine game, fine. This is just the Dread X collection, like, category. <laughs> it's got to go in fine game, fine horror, because the horror is not that good, and the game is also not that good, but I really like it, <laughs> you know? But we like Skellingtons. <laughs> Do you like some Skell? The Skellingtons are very goofy, and I don't think they're meant to be. <laughs> they have very, like, goofy... He was dissing Skeletons, I heard it. Uh, so the Dreadx collection as a whole is, like, good game, decent horror. That's fair, right? Yeah, I think that kind of sums it up perfectly. All in all, I, I want to play more of them. I've, um, there's, like, two recent ones that I haven't played. Um, and I even have, uh, I actually, uh, I got given a key for, oh my gosh, what is it? Is it five? I, I believe I got given a key from five by a friend um, uh, who uh, made a game that is in the Dreadx Collection 5, which is super cool. Um, uh, and so, uh, yeah, I, I, I kind of want to play that one. And I also would like to check out his game as well. Um, <laughs> I love the music that I put on for this stream. Uh, I think that's everything I got to say about Drag's Collection 2. It's really cool. Oh, yeah. I, I guess I didn't talk about the, the like, the hub world. Um, So, like, in Dread X Collection 2, you're, like, walking around this hub world trying to get keys. Um, And the puzzles in the hub world are really fun and cool. Um, I, I really liked them. And you can kind of, like, do as many as you want. So you can just do the hub world at your own pace. You can do it all at once at the start or like do it for each game. Like each time you get a key, go unlock a game. And it's super fun, like getting to pick out a game from the shelf and like, you know, like being like, oh, what's this one going to be? It's got the feeling of like unwrapping presents under a Christmas tree, but like 
the presents are horror games. Okay, moving on. Whoops. Oh, gosh. The man in the window. Uh. Uh. Um. Feels mean to put it here, but it's <laughs> kind of true. Um, it was, it was definitely, uh, is, I mean, it was a game. You did play the game. Why? What? And this is coming from me. Why are there bunnies? <laughs> what? What? I. It's just, it's, okay, 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 okay. I, I, I think I'm formulating my thoughts. So first off, it's a bad game. <laughs> That's the first thing I have to say, is that the game itself is, is like, not good. But also, you get the vibe, again, that it's like a small project from one person. But like, it's a bad small project from one person. <laughs> Feels really mean. But like... The only part of the game that is moderately scary is the fact that you have a ticking clock to, like, solve the game's one puzzle. Uh, and as you look in the at the keyhole, you can see whatever the man in the window is getting closer and closer. The vibes are just horrendous, though. Like, like the reason that I, like, ask why are they bunnies is, like... Just because it's just weird. It's weird that they're like anthro bunnies. Um, and it doesn't fit the vibe. <laughs> the only thing scary is legit the title screen. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. I, I just... I, I'm trying to come up with stuff to say about it, but it's just a singular puzzle. That you have some time to complete, which is cool. It's fine if a game is that short, but it's just like there's not much horror. There's not much, and the vibes are just so weird and horrendous that it's just kind of ends up being kind of funny. I feel like I'm really like trashing it, but as I did not enjoy it. Maybe some people enjoy it. I don't know. I'm scared. Oh. Oh, that's a tough one. So I have a question. Actually, no one probably knows the answer to the question. I don't know if I finished this game because it just kind of stopped happening. I think I finished the base game, but then like they had come out with more. I, the version I was playing just didn't have the version that had more. But from what I played... Good game. Good game, decent horror. It's got more than decent horror. I it's it is pretty damn scary. Listen. These categories are not, are, are not completely based on quality but on scary. Uh, no. <laughs> I think I was around for this and you didn't. Oh, okay. Damn, but this tune is a vibe. I actually don't know where to put this. I really like the writing and the vibes are on point. They're, the, the writing is sparse, but when it does, it hits. I like it. I, I, I just don't know if it's scary enough. There are sections that were definitely scary. But in general, uh, good no, good game. I, I'm settling. I'm settling. Good game. I think it's helping me to look at like the games as being ranked alongside and kind of judge it off of that. And when I judge it off of that, it does not feel like it belongs up here with some of these like A tiers. Baldi's basics. Hi, Maxwell. Welcome, welcome. So Baldi's basics is a game. I have. N I, I if I'm correct. 
I have not played on stream. However, I wanted to talk about it. Um, because I think it's a really interesting game and also because I played the sequel on stream and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Um, uh, so I think Baldi's Basics is a really neat game. I think it's hilarious though. Baldi's Basics just cheek smacker 9000. You've played a Baldi's Basics. Yeah. And we'll get to that one. I... Not scary, but still good is definitely where this belongs because it's not scary. <laughs> it's really not. There's some slight moments of kind of horror, I guess. But like, generally, it's not that scary. And, um, but, but the thing that's interesting to me about it is the fact that it was made for a game jam. And then, like, for some fucking reason... <laughs> I, I guess it's not for some fucking reason. Like, people just catch on to mascot horror. Mascot horror is just such a thing, you know? But Baldi's, Baldi's Basics has a vibe. It has an identity. It's not, you know... It's not like, you know, other games that we will get to that might have green characters on the title. Like, it, it has this identity as, like, a cursed, like, 90s PC game. Which is, strangely enough, I think one of the reasons it caught on is because that's, like, a Garden of Baldi. One of the reasons that, that caught on is because, like, somehow, despite the, like, 90s nostalgia game being such a common thing, I like, the only ones I can think of, like, that are horror-based are, like, Baldi's Basics. Some slight graphical quirks are in a lot of games, like I'm Scared and whatnot. Petscop, but Petscop's not really a game. I don't know. Um, but I think Baldi's is a cool game. Uh, I have also beat it. I beat it off stream. Uh, it's like, it's hard. It, it's kind of got the slender thing going on, where it's like, you got to collect the, the seven, eight things, right? And then, like, leave. But, like, the difference is that Baldi's Basics is balanced. <laughs> uh, you can come up with different strategies, and winning the game is not impossible. It's not a Herculean task. It'll take you a good few tries, but it's kind of fun to figure it out and figure out how to win, uh, slowly getting closer and closer each time. Man, I haven't thought about Pat's Cup in years. <laughs> Me neither. I think I remember it before, but I'm going to recommend No One Lives Under the Lighthouse. Are you now? Because I'm going to take out a note and write down No One Lives Under the Lighthouse. What a what a, what a fancy thing that is. What a what what an absolute concept that that is right there. I know of that one. Oh, you all, you all know horror games that I don't. What the fuck? I do try to keep out of spaces that talk about horror games, though, so I can like discover for myself on my own stream now, though, which I I kind of much prefer. Can you believe they just made a game where no one lives under the light? I'm sure someone lives under the lighthouse. Um, Baldi's Basics Plus. What the fuck happened here? <laughs> What happened? <laughs> Baldi's Basics Plus is weird and confusing and boring and not scary and not really fun. It's kind of cursed, I guess. But it just kind of sucks. <laughs> like, out of all the games on this list that I played on stream... This was probably the one that I had the least fun with because I just had nothing to say or do. It's honestly sad they didn't even make it into funny. Yeah. Yeah, right? I feel like the, the, like somehow it lost its charm while replacing it with nothing. And I'm not even, I can't even correctly articulate why or why I think I dislike this game so much, but I definitely, do not like it. 
Well, that Y category is filling up. It's about to fill up even more. No players online. Um, this. Ooh. Um. Yeah. Yep. There was more to the game than what you saw. Wait, no players online? I remember this one fondly. Is there more to no players online than what I saw? Because if that's the case, I'll just secure its spot right here. The reason that I'm putting it here, like, really, I should go back to it. Um, the reason I'm putting it here, you know, like a lot of these games in the top tiers, is, is because, like, what a concept, you know? What a, it's such a, like, it's such a relatable concept to, like, go back to a game that you used to love and, like, the servers are, like, okay, Murder Miners. <laughs> there is a game called Murder Miners, and it's, like, Halo mixed with Minecraft, and I used to love it. <laughs> it was, I loved that fucking game. You could make your own levels. The parkour was really fun. There was melee weapons and like grappling hooks and dashes and all kinds of different weapons and vehicles. It was so fun. It was so customizable too. All the custom maps were so cool. And I remember my last time booting up that game. I was like going through games on my 360, just going through a little nostalgia tri trip. Was that the game? No, not in spot. No, no, it, it's, it's not a... It, it's definitely like a somebody literally said, let's cross Halo with Minecraft, and that then it got made. <laughs> like, that's exactly what the game is. Um, like, it's got the building, like, stuff of Minecraft and, like, the gameplay of Halo. But, like, my last time going there, or like, my last time booting it up just for a nostalgia trip and, like, checking out my accounts and stuff... And just seeing, like, all of the, like, abandoned maps that I used to play on. And and used to mess around with, with friends for hours and hours and hours. And just, like, going through them alone in silence. No Players Online really, really, really hit that vibe for me. And while the horror isn't anything to write home about, the game is. I don't even know how to describe, like, a game goes this high when, like, I can't even describe to you properly, I can't even properly articulate the feeling and the unique vibe of horror that this game brings. It's something that I didn't know I wanted, and it's really, really, really cool. It's a really cool game. And I think it's free. Play it. Play the fucking game. Spooky's House of Jump Scares. That's tough. Peak? Whoa. <laughs> Someone's coming out the gates. So I haven't seen everything in Spooky's, I don't think. I've only played through the game once. But from what I've played through in the game, I really, really like it. And I kind of want to bump it. This is where I became a regular. Really? That was the first thing I watched you stream. Also for Nev. Yes, this, this game has fond memories because it's because of the, the, the stream memory I have with it as well. Yes. Um, it scared me. Not all the way through. But some sections were really goddamn scary. And I think that's why it's going to go here. I don't think it's an amazing game like some of the other ones up here. But it is scary. It, it like, I mean, it would go here if it were less scary. But it goes here and gets bumped up here because, because there are sections of this game that are inspired and freaky and cool. Generally, it's just something following you. 
and it just has different properties. But the way that's like inspired by all different kinds of like horror games of the past, like Clock Tower, I remember. Um, so many different horror games that it like homages to. Um and Windigo Daddy. I it's just it's a cool game. And and even further than that, there was a lot that I didn't see. Like, there's a lot of endings, there's a lot of secrets, there's a lot of stuff in the game um, that I did not go back for. Um, if you like Clock Tower, you should play Night Cry. This is a joke, do not play Night Cry. I've never heard of Night Cry. Uh, is this, is this fucking... Is this fucking... Is this Nightmare Before Christmas? <laughs> I thought this was a video game music. What happened? It was Kickstarter's spirit, spirit, spiritual successor. It was not good. Really? Huh. It's funny. When I hear this song, I think of the This is Aperture parody because I'm a portal freak. Um, Next game. Inscription. Oh, I was, I was, oh, I was, I was about to. I was about to. I was about to just snap that into peak horror. Mm. This is tough. Isn't it tough? Inscription is such a good fucking game. <laughs> Oh, this is tough. Amazing story, but isn't always scary. No. I, yes. But the vibes, the vibes. We have, like, we have put games higher because the vibes were just on point. And, like, I can't put this in actually pretty damn scary. I have to put this in either like good game to emphasize that the game is really good, but it's not that scary or peak horror to emphasize that it's just a great horror game. I thought this was an, yeah, I know. Oh, it's kingdom hearts. That makes sense. Because it's a video game playlist. There's Castlevania in here too, so it's not just Nintendo. Chat. Chat, I will I I I I will let you I will let you sway me on this one. I'd say peak. Peak, peak. I'm getting peaks. I. It feels good up here, doesn't it? It feels right. This feels right. And I think I'm more okay with putting it up here because of all the ARG stuff and specifically how it ends. Oh my god. Oh, just the whole ending sequence. Oh my gosh. Yeah, no. I, I'm, I'm kind of hyping up now. It's, it's definitely peak. Just good game feels wrong. I agree. I agree. I know nothing of the game. I will not say peak. Really? All right. All right. Play inscription though. Great game. Um, and, and I see a lot of people saying two thirds is peak. What do you all describe as two thirds? Are you all talking about chapters one and three? Because I think I agree. But if you're talking about chapters one and two, I disagree. I do not like chapter two. Definitely not two. Okay. Okay. All right. We 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 agree then. Two is the part I was excluding. Okay. I mean one and three. All right. That that's what I was thinking. I don't necessarily hate that section of the game. I think it 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 works really well with the ARG vibe. You know. I mean, obviously that's why it's there. Yeah, Inscription is just so good. I, I don't even know exactly what to say about it. It's one of those games that I would recommend to people who don't even like horror, and I think that's, like, a good thing, you know? Um, 
Uh, next. Yume Nikki. Hey, Yume Nikki was a collab. Inscription was a collab, too. I... Aww. Zodiac, thank you for the gift to Casual Corn. I really appreciate it. Um, so Inscription was a game that I collabed with Evie, and Yume Nikki is a game that I collabed with <laughs> Nikki. Um, I knew that I wanted to collab this with someone, and I'm really glad I chose Nikki, because the game is... It's good, right? It's it's a good game. Um, it's a good game with some decent horror, but it's also just very surreal. And I knew I needed someone there to like liven up that stream a bit. And who else? And who else but Nikki, right? Um, very hard puzzles. Yeah. So like. It definitely doesn't go any higher. I, I And I'm almost tempted to, like, bump it down to, like, Not Scary Still Good or Fine Game, Fine Horror. Um, The thing that kind of pushes me up to, like, Good Game, Decent Horror um, is, like... Um... Like, all the... I, I don't even know what it's called. The, the one secret with, like, the house where you flip off the light switch and it has a random chance to, like... I All the surreal stuff is just really cool. I, and I love these kind of surreal games. So... I don't know. I think it's bumped up a little higher by my own, like... My own enjoyment of surrealist horror. But it's also just so charming. Like, it's just such a charming game. I don't know. I, I've always really liked it. I had played it before I played it on stream, but I had not finished it ever. Um, I don't think I even got any eggs. I just kind of explored the worlds and found some power-ups and stuff. Um, this is a subjective list. You put stuff where stuff goes by def- Yeah, yeah. Well, it's- Yeah, of course. Of course, of course. Um, I'm sure there are plenty of people- who would scoff at FNAF in peak horror, but fuck you. It's my list. Um, but yeah, no, that's why I was putting Yumaniki up here. I don't really have that much to say about it. Play it. It's good. <laughs> oh, boy. Mm. Let's see here. Penny in the stink machine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I do think it fits pretty, pretty. I like at first I was like, I don't know about funny. It's just kind of bad, you know? Um But um then I thought about the fight with Boris where like he throws a fucking minecart at you and like it like it like bounces off the floor with like like it's a bouncy ball or like it hits a box that completely stops it or something ridiculous that he does and the game has funny moments that clip makes me laugh every time yeah it it has it has enough funny moments and it's bad enough of a game for me to put it down here i will admit it does feel harsh but like cuz cuz it's not a terrible game and i this is almost pushing a little because not everything is bad right like like we said we it's got a good aesthetic um wow i that's <laughs> i was going to say other things i promise i i was not trying to make a point i was not trying to like i wasn't trying to bash the game more i was trying to talk about positives um, the game looks very pretty I like some of the music from the game. I don't know if it was actually in the game. Okay. Um, some of the... Everything that is good about the game is in its visuals or, like, its, like, creature or world design. I love the, 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 the inky guy with a camera for a head. Um... 
I like that Bendy has a final form. That's kind of fun. Um, I promise I'm thinking of positives to kind of offset the fact that it's all the way down here. But it is a very bad game. <laughs> the gameplay. Because it's Ashley. Ah, uh, you still love Ashley. Uh, so... <laughs> I gain distracted by the music continuously. Ashley. Okay. Um <laughs> All right, I got to move on. I got to I got to I got to keep going. Um I played so much WarioWare on GBA. I played a lot of WarioWare on DS and Wii. Which I guess checks out. This part is going to be awesome in the VOD. No one's watching the VOD for this. Uh, Iron Lung. Are we, are we gonna, are, are we gonna argue with this? Uh, mm, uh, mm, uh, mm. Iron Lung, no arguments. Mina can read maps of the Sim. Peak is probably fair. Asking for a friend, how many more games do you have to categorize? It's 2 a.m. and I has the sleepies. Oh my gosh. Please, please get some rest if you need it. I've got like about 15, I think. It's gonna be a little while. I I would I would get some rest, please. You can always come back and watch the VOD, even if there's no BGM. Um, uh, so, no, I, I, I'm, I'm undecided here. Like, okay, let, let me talk about it and maybe I'll talk myself into one, one thing or the other. So Iron Lung is definitely a super unique game, like a lot of other games that I put up here. Um, just absolutely inspired concept really like it was a very short very simple but very effective yeah yeah definitely um let's go in here i uh, it's tough so like it, it's very close to peak horror for me um i think the thing that lowers it down to actually pretty damn scary I I really can't talk about like why it's being lowered down. More just like it it is a game that is very like it's a very very much got the powerless thing. It's very restrictive. It's got a great concept. It's got great horror moments. No, I'm talking myself into peak because like. Oh my god, when you just hear something pass by you, and it's just like, oh my god, it's just so... The fact that you know that this, like, place that you're, like, moving around in is just a crawling cesspit full of stuff is just so... I... I don't know. I Chat, I will let you sway me again. I think someone's, I think. I thought someone said, um, someone said peak. No arguments. Peak is probably fair. Not peak, Madge. Not peak? I hear not peak. I'm, de I'm, I'm letting, I'm letting the gamers decide. Where does Iron Lung stand? Is it in Y? Did you play the game? I played the game. It stands on the peak. All right. All right. I think I think Taurus is implying that I should absolutely be putting it in peak. I'm not saying peak to anything that I know and didn't make me piss myself. That's fair. 
Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, Outlast. Outlast is actually pretty damn scary. <laughs> it's not an incredible game, and I actually feel like I don't have that much to say about it, to be honest. Um, but, like... And it wasn't even that scary until the part that I literally quit the game. <laughs> and I continuously talk about that part. Maybe it was just too late at night. Maybe it was because I was having a busy weekend. I don't know exactly why, but I will never forget, like, running down that hall and just just witnessing one of those heckin' guys just slowly start making their way towards me, going, hiding under a bed, and ending stream because I wanted to run away. <laughs> I regret missing the later parts of that stream. Yeah, I, it, uh, yeah. It was very scary. Again, I don't have that much to say. It's not a super inspired concept or anything. There's nothing about it that's really special in my eyes. It's pretty generic, but it's just such a good game with such high, kind of like, kind of like Poppy Playtime, where it's just such a well put together project with like so much good production value behind it that it feels wrong to put it anywhere, but actually pretty damn scary, especially with how bad it fucking scared me. <laughs> like, that feels like where it goes. Um, in most. Uh, not scary. Still good. I really liked in most. Security breach being in everything is bad, but it's funny kills me. I've never read anything so accurate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, welcome in, Tempest. Um... So, um, Inmost left one serious impression. It did. The story of Inmost is really good. It's a very, like, it's a very good, very solid game, you know? Like, and, and it does have scary moments. This isn't to say, mm, does it, am I talking myself into bumping it up to, to good game, decent horror? thinking about it mulling it over i'm thinking about it no nope, not gonna do it i don't think it's that scary it has a couple moments that are a bit scary but generally it's just a really good game you know it's just a very good game with creepy vibes really striking imagery a really tense story uh, so much of it is so good um, but I don't think it's, like, an incredible horror game, you know? We have some of the sections with the night. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I don't... The, the things I remember scaring me most was the beginning of the games, like, first encountering the blob things was, like, a little scary, and then, like, crawling around the house as the little girl could sometimes be freaky. Generally because I was just terrified something bad was going to happen to her. And then bad things happened to her. Um, but it's not scary. It's just kind of tense, you know? It's more of a thriller than a horror. You know what I mean? My Happy Place. Uh, good game. Decent horror. I really liked this one. You know me. I love my surrealist horror. Um, this one kind of surprised me. This is one of those, like free itch downloads that like like it's like a total shot in the dark i think this one was a winner i really really liked it um it's uh it's got some really really just like imagery that really makes you stop and stare at it for a full minute and just go what is this like this makes me feel uncomfortable and I'm just, like i'm trying to find grasp meaning in these visuals um, this game left very little impression on me. Wow. Okay. I mean, I can totally see that. I can definitely see that. Some of the parts of the game that I'm not a huge fan of are like, there's like some sections that like kind of throw some text at you. And I don't even remember what the text even said, to be honest, because I feel like it was just kind of generic and whatever. But everything else... 
I'm with Ark on that. Maybe I'm alone on this, on, on liking this one. But um, I, uh, I just really liked, I liked all the imagery. It's just a simple game that you walk through. You see this creepy imagery. You get a little bit of like piecing it together, but it doesn't really mean anything. It's just surrealist shit. And then it ends. And yeah, I, I, I liked it. I was happy with it. I feel like the aesthetic carried it. Yeah, it had a very cool aesthetic as well. The visuals, like, with a game like this, like, there's definitely no gameplay to note of. And so you really are just down to the visuals. It's weird how when a game doesn't have gameplay, you don't judge it for its gameplay. You know what I mean? You kind of got to judge it for what it is. Um, And that's why Bendy and the Ink Machine is all the way down there, despite being about as pretty as my happy place. Um, um, <sighs> listen, I don't know why I even bothered to split these up, okay? But, like, you know what? 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 You know what, though? You know what, though? You know what, though? You know what? You know what, though? I am going to split them up because, like, the first Garden of Bam Bam game was kind of funny. The second Garden of Bam Bam game was also kind of funny. This game is the most forgettable thing I have ever played in my life and I have nothing to say about it. And this game made me want to die. <laughs> I was so done. I see, like, I was kind of the. I went into these, like, thinking that they would be like these. You really hate for I. Oh my god. <laughs> I hated playing for. Yeah, there are funny bits. You know what I think I hate about four? There was like a voice actor in there, the guy who voices the half and half boy who like was actually a good voice actor like why is there a good voice actor in this game these games are only entertaining because they're so bad just make them bad just make them bad on purpose just do it i think these games are worse because they lose the funny while still being severely terrible like um in the section where choo choo charles shows up just made me angry don't remind me of what I could be playing right now. Uh, the frog VA is an actual VA. Yeah. And I don't like that. I don't want that. Get actual VAs out of here. I want just some guy, like, with, like, with the red... This guy's voice is so fucking stupid. And I'm sorry. I think the person voicing him is also, like, the person who made the game, so it feels mean. But also... Oh my god, it's one of the funniest video game voices ever, and it's the reason that Garden of Bam Bam 2 is all the way up here, because it's, the voice acting is so bad that it's funny. Um, and the voice actor for the jellyfish guy is also quite terrible, but like... It just wasn't as funny. It just got old. I'm just done. <laughs> what, do you think it's weird to make six games in a year? Although, the, yeah, I... I... Yeah. I mean, do I have anything more to say about these fucking games? They're bad. You know they're bad. Don't play them. They're not fun. They're not even that entertaining. They're not even that funny. I... Ugh. The second one was pretty funny. No, 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 no. I'll, I'll give you that one. I'll give you that. The second one was entertaining. You know? But I do wish I had quit there. <laughs> Gotta quit at the peak. Garden of Bam Bam 2 is the best game in the franchise. Because it was the most funny. And they're all bad. Um, don't play these games, please. <laughs> don't, don't support this. Don't do what I did. Time to pre-order Bam Bam 5 and 6. No. Please don't. Please don't do that. I'll cry. Moving on. Pen Pal. You know what? You know what? I think we finally got another another uh scary game but not good. 
If you refuse any and all band band gifts. And that's, yeah, that's to you all as well. I, um, I remember being scared of this one, but, like, I don't know why. Because it's, like, it's not that scary. Uh, but, Mina, how else will you play them? I won't. I don't know. I, the, one of the things I remember about Pen Pal was having to look up a walkthrough in order to find out how to get the good ending or something. It wasn't very good. It it was just kind of... It was just kind of whatever. Um, But it did scare me in the moment. I don't know why I'm scared of dark houses. What's up with these like not good games that take place in dark houses that scare me? What's going on with that? I totally forgot I watched you play this. Yeah, right? It's super... I remember you looking up Walker to figure out how to get the controls to work. Oh, yeah, you're right. Because the game was bugged out. This was like a free game on Itch, though. So, eh, you know, it happens. I get it. But it's not very good. Um. Uh, next. Oh, this one's going to be tough. Close your eyes. I've talked very highly on this game, right? I I've said some very nice things about this game. However, like standing it up next to all the rest of these games. I figured this would be an automatic peek. It scared the fuck out of me. <laughs> it terrified me it is some of the most scared that i have been and that is why i want to put it in peak i i i i hated it i hated it because i was so scared and that really does speak to something it's peak it's peak it's is it peak is it it's peak it's a decently long game for something that's a free download on itch. It was like, you know, like a couple hours, if I remember correctly. It's got a neat vibe. It's got a cool story. It's got compelling gameplay. It's really scary. Unique mechanics, great aesthetic, interesting gameplay. Yeah, it's kind of the whole package. Like, I I almost want to bump it down just because it almost doesn't feel like it should stand alongside some of these, like, amazing games. But, like, it totally does. It's that good. Like, it kind of, like, sort of, kind of, like, it gets less scary towards, like, the last, towards, like, the last third or so. But man, there are still some scary, but no, like, and I remember every section of that game. Like, I remember the, like, the surrealist parts was, like, a relief because it was, like, less scary, but I still loved those parts. Yeah, it it's peak. It's great. It's a really good game. Um, Ib. I liked Ib. Um, uh... Good game, decent horror. Did Ib scare me? Because I don't think it did. I fucking love Ib. I still really want to play Ib for myself. I don't think so. I don't think it scared me. I don't... I think I... Ib is not very scary. Yeah. I don't think I was... Even though it's, it's not scary... I don't think I was a huge vi a, a huge fan of the horror in general in in Ib, but I I liked the game. It was a fun game, you know. Um, like it's still good. Um, but it it really didn't scare me. Um. Uh the the whole uh the concept is super cool. The execution is also super cool. There's a bunch of different endings that I've kind of been hunting around. Um, I, I've I've come back and replayed this game, so that's like, you know, that's that's a mark towards something. Um, I mean, it's it's good. I don't even know what else to say really, other than just like, 
It's a good RPG maker horror game that's not very scary, but it's got some fun puzzles and a decent story, some good vibes, and uh, some fun characters. Like, it's just a solid game. Oh, we're getting there. We are getting towards the end. We're we're starting to get to games that it's like, oh yeah, th these are games from this year. Um, Franbo. Um, Franbo. I guess it's kind of the same vibe as Ib, maybe. Are there any scary sections in Franbo? It's more charming than it is scary, right? Vibes are super good. I don't know if I'd call it scary. Yeah, I agree. Franbo's a great game, though. I, um, it's completely logical, me. <laughs> yeah. Um, the story is like if if we're ranking this game these games on story this would be like up here you know um because the story is great i really really love the game does not take a side on if fran is actually insane or if um like these things are actually happening and both are definitely super possible. Um, you know what Franbo reminds me of? And this is a super high compliment. Franbo reminds me of Pan's Labyrinth in a lot of ways. Um, it might have even been inspired by it because, like, all the things that I love about Pan's Labyrinth, um... Are, are kind of in Franbo where, like, a very cryptic ending that kind of, that, like, I love a happy ending that feels wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's so, that's such a good vibe. And that's such a mark of good storytelling. Um, the music in Franbo is great. The vibes are on point. The writing is excellent. The art is super good it literally just got like an update that like upscaled the whole game um and made it look and sound even better play the fucking game <laughs> rambo deals with the loss of it <laughs> rambo reminds me of third eye oh my god third eye isn't on here no <laughs> i knew i would forget one. Oh my god I literally forgot about it. I'm a bit surprised you never checked out Misfortune. I did check out Misfortune. In fact, I own it. <laughs> um, If Third Eye were here, it would go in... <laughs> I don't know. It would go in Everything is Bad, but it's funny. Yeah, because everything is bad, except for the, it's got this. It's like Bendy and the Ink Machine, except it's a property that I like. <laughs> Gotta be honest. Um, am I done? Ta I'm done talking about Franbo. Okay. I remember this dream. Um, this game was awesome. Um, genuinely scary. Good game. Really good sound design. Um, based off of a creepypasta, if I recall, um, I like the text. The cryptic text was really good. I feel similar to it about it that I do my happy place. I think it belongs right next to it. Um, it's free. It's on itch. You should totally play it. Um, it's like, I don't know. I, I, I just really liked it. I, I don't feel like I have that much to say about it. Oh, okay. I will say one more thing. My opinion of it is definitely heightened by the fact that it takes place in like a snowy, dark forest. Because that just reminds me of home. And therefore scares me more. Um, but um, we're getting into... So this... I remember this dream. Is from... The Halloween streams that we've had recently have been peak. 
we're about to get some of the best games. Um, and I'm gonna struggle not to talk about them for too long, so I'm just gonna cruise past. I remember this dream. Uh, even though there's more I kind of think I want to say about it, but I can't come up with it. Oops all bangers. We're about to oops all bangers this. Um, Andy's Apple Farm. Yeah, no, yeah, it's it's actually pretty damn scary. Like, I, um, I really, really liked this one. It, <laughs> you stole my keys. It takes... I mean, it takes the FNAF minigames and essentially, like, makes a full game out of that. And honestly, describing it like that is kind of not doing it justice, to be honest. Like, I think it's really good. Like, it's got good horror. Um, it doesn't overindulge. I, I, was, I was expecting it to overindulge. I was expecting it to be too much. It's not. It's, it's like... It's really, it's just really good. It's obviously super FNAF inspired, but I think it takes a lot of the good elements of FNAF and plunks them into just a small little project that kind of pops off. I really like it. Uh, I, I honestly don't even know if I have that much more to say about it. Like, there is such, like, I, it's another, like, I can always judge if I remember like, some of these games, like, uh, like this one, Arcade Electra and stuff, like, sometimes I can judge a game based on of how much I remember of it. And, like, my happy place, I remember this dream. I remember these games super well. <laughs> um, like, Andy's Apple Farm is definitely up there. We're like, I remember this whole game. I remember all of the, like, all the, all the spooks. It was just so good. It was just very good. Choo Choo Charles is so peak. Choo Choo Charles is just intensely peak. Choo Choo Charles is so fucking good. <laughs> was Choo Choo Charles... Hell yes, Choo Choo Charles was scary. So, oh gosh, I have so much to say about this game. Choo Choo Charles is one of my favorite horror games of all time. Easily. Easily. It's one of the best games I've played on stream. And that is, like, that is really not something I think I throw around too often. Like, it's just so intensely good. Um, now I will say, uh, Nightmare Mode just came out. And I played it. And I don't like it. <laughs> um, I don't like Nightmare Mode. I get that the purpose of it is to, like is to be like a rage quittingly hard permadeath mode. Um but what it really ends up being is sit in the house for 20 minutes and try to wait for Charles to go away so that you can carry on with the game. Good game one Chris is in the guards with the guns. I don't uh I don't really mind them too much. There's so little of them in the game that it doesn't really bother me. It's for some people you are not a part of that group. Well, I mean, is it though? Because I just think it kind of ruins the horror of the game personally. I mean, I beat it. I I I finish it. Um but uh I I did like I did have some amount of saves coming because it's just not fair. <laughs> it's just a really, really unfair and not fun. Like, once you get, like, to a point, it's just RNG for the first half until you get your train upgrade enough to actually be able to fight Charles. And then, like, or, you know... Because otherwise, if Charles sees you in the first half of the game, you're just done. It's over. You have to, like, bail into a house, and if you can't do that, you lose. <sighs> it's not fun. But I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about how Choo Choo Charles is great. Um, uh, because it, it just, it, it's got such good gameplay. The open world is so 
cool what a cool thing to have in 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 this kind of game this open world where you travel on a train i have always wanted like a spirit tracks like game because i love games where you like like ride and control trains you know like and like exploring a world like that like i want an open world train game and choose your halls is my open world train game with some horror flair some really good like a, a really tight story just insane amounts of polish it's just so good i could sit here and talk about like everything i love about the game and i want to but i'm going to like stop myself it's, it is literally spooky spirit tracks mia suddenly reminds me of the film direction from a hat in time uh okay i'm i'm moving on chuja charles's peak limbo Limbo is a classic. Um, I want to say it joins like these games in the not scary but good category. I think that's fair. Is anyone scared by Limbo? I love the aesthetic. Um, hi, Nethis. Welcome, welcome. The aesthetic of Limbo is fucking great. The, like... It's got fun puzzles. It's a nice length. It's like a perfect length game. It's just like, it's a really, really good game. And it's a classic. It's an indie darling. And I really don't think I have much I can say about it, to be honest. Um, like, I feel like it's a good sign for a game as well. Because there's like a, there's an achievement to beat the game. It's like beat the game, uh like without beat the game without dying five times i think um and you can tell that it's like a good game when that challenge feels fair <laughs> and it only takes me like two or three attempts to do it it's foreboding and depressing yeah the the vibes are on point for sure um yeah it's it's a really really good game i really like it uh, LIDAR.EXE. Mm. Actually pretty damn scary. This is a really good game. I really, really like this one. Um, a super cool concept that definitely... I was hoping that game would be more. I can see that. Uh, and I do think it kind of falls flat at the end. However, I don't think that discredits what the game does do. And what very cool concept with that ending wasn't great. I I'm I feel confident putting it up this high because yeah, the concept is good, the gameplay is fun. It's like it's always cool to me when a game is scary, but I also enjoy playing it. Like Choo Choo Charles. Like or Iron Lung. That's always like a super cool thing to me. Um and I felt that with LiDAR.exe with how short it was. And I feel like that's kind of an achievement. I feel like putting it next to these two is kind of doing it a disservice because I think it's, I think it's a bit better. Um, it's a bit more in-depth. It's got a bit more meat on its bones. And I, um, I just really like it. I do wish there was a bit more story sprinkled in there, maybe. Um, I wish the ending was something more. And... But yeah, like, it's not perfect, but it's really, really good. It was a free download. It was a small project. I think it's a good small project. I recommend it. Anatomy is just such peak. <laughs> I can't believe I played three horror games this year that made me say, this is my favorite horror game of all time. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Anatomy is so good. It's so good. This is lights off and pen pal, but if it was amazing. <laughs> this is like lights off if it like. It's just, oh my God. It's so. Silent Hill 2 remake next year. Fingers crossed on that one. Yeah. I've never played a Silent Hill game. Not gonna lie. Um. But, um, yeah, like, 
oh my god the story and the theming and the like and the vibes and the and the oh my god and the sound and like and the detail and the 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 polish anatomy is just so stupid good like the fact that it like oh my gosh that not like all oh, that and everything to do with the ending is just oh it's just oh it's just so good i'm still geeking out about it i don't even i like i don't even know how to like this is the one horror game that i like i can't even talk about i can't even talk about it like it's just that good it needs i need to like sit down and write about it like it's got so much good in it and i can't wait to play more from this artist i cannot wait because it's such a good game so good a decent length a pretty good length um my mouth is getting super dry oh my god anatomy video essay one mm. well that video essay is coming also thank you for the stretch probably need that I haven't gotten that Ugh, in a minute okay um yeah, anatomy is great, and I love it. Me, tattletale. Me, love you. Um. Brush me. Brush me. Um. Give me a treat. Um, I came around on this one. It's going somewhere around here. I, I know that might sound insane because I was not a huge fan of this one when I played it. Um, but I came back to it. I 100 percent of it. It seemed miserable at the end. It was, but I've now replayed that ending like two different times. And it's really not bad. I just didn't understand you had to break vase uh the the vases and also I didn't understand just how kind of safe you are during that section it's actually kind of tough to die um but yeah like the music and the and the like no more mama like covering up the sound cues that you need in order to yeah it, it's it's not perfect don't get me wrong um which is why I think I might put it here. I think it feels good in um, in fine game, fine horror. And I will say, like, the game has charm. I don't think I could put it down here with some of these. Uh, or, or even here. This is where I would have put it after I finished it. After reflecting on it and playing it again, I, I, I would bump it up here. Um, like, it's it's very charming. No, more, Mina. Um, I, I, I don't know. I really love Tattletail. I think Tattletail is so goddamn cute. And, um, I don't know. Like, for most of the game, I was pretty scared. I think the gameplay mechanics are fun. It's fun to shake up that flashlight. It's like... Um, the, the, like, kind of survival management with Tattletale is, like, you know, like, it's not amazing, but it's something. It could definitely not be there, and I think the game would be worse off for it. So, like, I don't know. Um, I don't think it lives up to its hype at all, but it, it was fine. It was fine. It was fine game. Edging on good, but fine. Oh, husk. Where would you all put this game? Before I say anything, before before I put this anywhere, where where would you all put this game? I, I just I just wanna I, I just wanna gauge the room on this one. Yeah. You didn't even want to finish it. Listen, I I listen, I asked the question, okay? Answer the question. <laughs> Where, where would you, where, where, for those of you who watched it, 
I suppose oh, it's definitely funny because of the voice acting. Oh, it's definitely funny because of the voice acting. Don't get me wrong. Where is the category for wasted potential? That sums it up perfectly. And I mean, you know my thoughts on this game. They really haven't changed. Um, I'm actually struggling to remember that one. Damn. I'm going to stick this one in scary game, but not good. I think it fits pretty cleanly there because to be honest, the vibes and the, and the, and the horror in this game like in isolated moments are like a tier but the game as a whole flounders so much it reveals the monster it don't ever do if you ever want your your horror game to have any tension do not have your genuinely scary monster walk when they see the player do not have them walk up slowly and do a little slap animation that shit takes me out of any horror game and rightfully so it's just so nothing uh you know what the best thing about husk is that the, the games after were bangers you know what i agree uh hello neighbor was probably my favorite game i played all year uh, and I know I only played it for, like, what, 15 minutes? But those 15 minutes were transcendent. I mean, listen, some of these other games were, like, 15 minutes. Um, and this was just better than all of them. Um, uh, like, I'm not, like, listen, <laughs> the most horrible thing. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, like... Uh, when when it uh, forced me to disconnect my internet in order to boot it up, um, when it uh, crashed the game literally every single time I died, uh, that was pretty scary. <laughs> I that that was pretty darn scary. But of course, yes, the the most terrifying part of all was the fact that I couldn't refund this absolute piece of garbage. Worst game I've played on stream. So I haven't finished this one, and I plan to. Um, I was kind of going back and forth on how I would finish it, and I decided I'm probably going to finish it on stream. No, I couldn't refund it because I had bought it. I had um, purchased it, like, a couple months ago. When it was on sale. Because I wasn't paying full price for that shit. Even if I was going to stream it. Did you? Yeah, I tried it and it got rejected. It was like, nope, you can only refund it in the first two weeks of you buying it. Even though I had never played it. I know. I, I had never played it until I booted it up for that stream that day. And I detailed all the issues, too, that the game literally doesn't function. So yeah, I haven't uh I haven't finished this one, but I'm still gonna rank I'm still gonna talk about In Sound Mind because um oh well, because I want to. <laughs> um an in sound mind is probably gonna slot right about I don't know. I don't know, actually. It does get a lot worse later in the game to not be a cool, really cool game. Oh, it does need... Oh, it needs to get a lot worse later in the game to not be a really cool game. It's definitely a really cool game. Are you... How are you going to put it below damn scary? It was kind of killing you. You are correct. <laughs> and that's why we're putting it there. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I remember the game very vividly. I don't remember what specifically was scaring me, though, to be honest. It's it's just a... I mean, okay. I haven't finished it. <laughs> Dave did scare me. Um, I didn't... I obviously haven't finished it yet, but, like... 
it's just kind of a game that does like a lot of things right. I don't think it does anything like outstandingly. And I do think that, man, the only game, like the only game, like, I'm sorry. Is this horror music I'm listening to? What is this? Is this Toontown? What the fuck? <laughs> that was a nostalgia trip. Oh, it's the, oh, it's the, it's the horror tune town music. This is literally the best video game music soundtrack. All right. Anyway, um, I hate horror games with guns. There is like, always when a horror game has a gun, it is the worst part of the game. Like, especially with In Sound Mind, like everything about it is really great. But like, the gunplay is just terrible. <laughs> so bad. Yeah, I look at it and wish it wasn't a shooter. I feel the exact same. The only game with a gun, the only horror game with a gun that I have enjoyed, I haven't played Resident Evil, I'm sorry, um, is Choo Choo Charles. And that's a rail gun. That's different. But Inside Mine is cool. I love the way you dive into the tapes and the, and the like, you like resolve these, these stories. I'm, I'm excited to see how the rest of the game is. And I haven't played that much of it. I guess I don't have that much to say about it. It's definitely not peak horror. In fact, it's it's very nearly down here because, like, it's pretty frustrating in places. But uh, it, uh, it, it, it gets to be up here because it's really scary. <laughs> <sighs> We've made it. We are, we are here on the final game. And let me just, you know, let me just completely surprise you and blow you away. Uh, Little Nightmares is my favorite horror game and one of my favorite games of all time. <laughs> I don't even know how to talk about this. I... It does a lot. It does so much right. And, and like, don't get me wrong. This is probably a me thing. I don't think that, like, everyone, this is a game that everyone will love, but I think it's a game that everyone will like. I, I, I definitely think it's a game, like, I mean, how are you not going to like Little Nightmares? I just connected with it so hard. The gameplay is, oh, I love Pumpkin Hill coming on for this. The gameplay is, like, I've seen a lot of people get frustrated by the gameplay. Yeah, like, some of the platforming is not perfect. Like, the depth perception can be a little fucky. And that's it. <laughs> that's all the negatives. Everything else is positive. The setting, amazing. The story, fucking fantastic. The vibes, so unbelievably on point. The animations, the death animations, oh my god, they're so, in the, in the fucking, oh, and the, and watching Six just tear apart, and the music, oh my god, and the music, and the, and the, oh my gosh. I, I, I just can't even. I, I want to talk so much about Little Nightmares because I, I love it so much. Let me just, can I just talk about the ending? <laughs> because I have seen some people that do not like that ending. They think that the magic, I, I've heard people say that like the magical, the magic element of Little Nightmares came out of nowhere. No. <laughs> like, if you want to say like, oh, it first appears... Like, in the final section, if you get caught by the lady, right? No. Do you not remember the first... The, do you not remember the part in that, like, first chapter of the game where there's an eye that freezes you and turns you to stone? Like, there's been hints of magic throughout the whole game. Um, And before you know you were on a ship... Like, the, the, like, the rocking of everything is, like, 
I thought that was like an otherworldly kind of thing at first. That's how I perceived that until until I learned that you were on a ship. Um, which, oh my god, like the foreshadowing that of like of like what the mall is and what it is and why you're on it. And like the the slow building and like the like I even asked, I asked out loud, what the hell are all these dishes for? <laughs> I was like, what are all these dishes for? What are these people even doing here? What is this guy's job? Why are they getting paid? How are they getting paid? What is the history here? Why am I here? How did I get here? What is the and and like the way that just all of that like not only gets explained, but gets explained so Oh my god. It's so good. It's just so good. I I I oh. If I was going to order these top ones by the way, it would be like It'd be like this. Oh, I'm not going to order all of them. Fuck that. Um do you put Little Nightmares above Celeste? It It's too early. <laughs> it's way too early for me to, like, to say yes or no. But I will say it jo it joins alongside that list of my favorite games of all time easily. Um, and I just... I am going to talk about it more. I'm going to talk about a lot of these games. Or not a lot. I'm going to talk about some of these games more and some other games. But that's, uh, that's for, that's for me to, me to know and you to find out in two months. So <laughs> I'm just going to, I'm just going to leave it at Little Nightmares is my favorite horror game right now. And I, I, uh, ugh. That's the stream. <laughs> no, it's not. Of course it's not. I wouldn't leave you like that. That would be ridiculous. However, you know, <sighs> I do feel as though I've got <sighs> I've got one thing left to do, I think. Before, before we, uh, before we let the sun rise, I think I've got one more place I want us to go. Shed the darkness. You want me to shed the darkness? Yeah. <laughs> Let me out of the dungeon. You're not in the dungeon. But we're about to be. Do y'all want to go down there with me? Aw, oh, come on. <laughs> what do you mean, no? No? Hmm. Sure? That's what I like to hear. <sighs> Deep breath. Here we are. 
Welcome to the basement. I know I was keeping you all out, and what I said before about it being too dark and too cold to sustain anything but me, that was true. But just as I have over this month, it has changed. And the more I let myself become the demon I was, the more I'm rewinding myself and my surroundings. I knew it would be, would be hard, but my heart feels so hollow, so hungry. As Navina, I knew so much more about who I was and how, what I was. I want to talk about it. I want to show you, but it's just not that simple. These memories aren't just hard to gain back. They're wrought with so much pain, hatred. And this place, and the upstairs is barely warm enough to exist in. All light and heat that enters just... But down here, it's gone even further. It's pure black. Void. Death. I traced back the voice in my head until it became something that I could talk to and eventually we became one and the same and now I'm chasing something else it's not something that's directed that's directly tormenting me or talking to me not really but it's there humans understand how they're born they have a person to thank directly for it, too, most of them. But the further and further I look back, I see the same place, the same story, the same demon. But I can't see the beginning. It's blurry. It's muddled. It's like the clear water, water ripples more the closer you lean towards it to look inside. I am a human. I am a succubus. I am a demon. But I'm something else. Something I can't reach just yet. I'll have to find another way.